Welcome, dear listener, to Haunted Tales, your weekly horror anthology, with stories full of ghosts and ghouls, crimes and curses, demons and devils and more. Hold it! Oscar howled as he started to run towards the tractor, feeling the chill morning air on every exposed part of his skin. The loud revving of the engine ceased after the third try and the first time the front wheels of the tractor came off the ground, while he was still sprinting toward it. Gesticulating wildly, showing the person inside the machine to kill the engine, Oscar still slowed his steps a bit, apprehensive of getting too close to the plough, while the tractor might still pull one last time. It had been caught. That much was clear. Only, trying to pull it out with force had made it worse by now. He could see it. Something dark coming out of the ground, holding the foreshare in place. Finally, with a last grunt, the engine died, and he could see the tractor stopping, while puffs of warm air swiveled around its body. Oscar jumped up to the step at the side right next to the cab, and could finally see inside. His son was sitting there, still shaking his head, before finally reaching over to open the damned door. What is wrong with you? You almost broke the plow! Oscar growled, getting even more angry now that he could see his adult son's expression. One of incredulity. I know what I'm doing, Dad. He shot back, holding his gaze. It's easily strong enough to get the root out in one go. I just need a tiny bit of a run-up. Oscar could feel the urge to pull his son out of the tractor rising, yet forced himself to stay calm and pointed at the side mirror. Look at that thing. You're going to break the plow before it gets loose. He almost snapped as he saw his son roll his eyes before finally deigning to look where he was pointing, then suddenly getting eerily quiet. Through the mirror, they could see that the chisel had been buried deep into something dark that had now been drawn out of the ground a bit. Even if this thing broke and came loose, the plow would need to stop, otherwise the piece might destroy all the work they had done beforehand. Okay, okay, Dad, Oscar finally heard, and pulled himself back out, shaking his head and cursing softly under his breath. This was complete and utter idiocy. If he had talked back to his dad the way his son was talking to him, he'd been dragged out of there and beaten no matter how old he was. Still, there were more important things to do now. Getting the plough free and finishing this plot by the end of the week would give them enough time to sort out the rest of the operation this year. The margins were shrinking. Soon, they'd be in real trouble. It had time to get rid of the old farm and sell it to the big operators was approaching fast. What would his dad say if he could see it today? He'd probably die of another heart attack. Oscar could hear his son landing on the overgrown ground on the other side of the tractor, now following him back toward the plough without saying anything else. He could finally see the obstruction a bit more clearly. It was something made of wood, yet somehow it still seemed rather strange. The edges were far too sharp to be natural. It almost looked like this thing at a perfect right angle and Oscar hoped that they hadn't accidentally hooked some pipes. No, it definitely was made of wood, he told himself. Yet somehow, it still gave him the chills. He was the first one to reach it, slowly extending a hand toward the main shaft of the plow that was caught right underneath the wood, which was now sticking out of the ground like an overturned V. His son whistled softly as he approached as well, mumbling a short apology as his hand found the wood too. Jesus, 
that's not a root, he heard him say, and Oscar could feel the confusion now rising inside him as well. The longer he looked at it, the stranger it seemed. Yeah, it was made of wood, but definitely not natural. The edges had been carved and it looked like two thick beams that had been connected at a right angle, sticking out of the ground. Was there ever a barn or such here, Dad? You heard his son ask, and immediately shook his head. Nothing like that. At least not these past hundred years. Carefully he knocked on the wood and listened to the noise it gave off. No hollow sound and no part of it was breaking. It wasn't brittle. Oscar shot his son a glance, who seemed just as confused as him. It's not rotten in the least, Dad. This thing can't be older than a year, then. Right? Again, he shook his head. No one had used this plot of land in the last hundred years for nothing. Old legends were going around these parts. Stories his dad had told him, just as his grandpa had told his dad. This lot here would never carry any fruit. It would stay barren as long as people lived and worked in these fields. Yeah, but the margins now were so low, he needed the space. So they had started digging out the ground, plowing it to make another field. Putting his shoulder against the wood, he tried moving it back to loosen the main share of the plow, but the wooden thing didn't budge at all. Shit. If they were unlucky, it could cost them the whole day. We need to get the plow out first. Then pull this thing free with the rope, okay? Oscar spoke those words without looking up still trying to test out if he could move or at least wiggle the main chair with his hands, but found it stuck completely. Shit. He could hear his son walking back towards the cab of the tractor, knew he should get some distance between himself and his obstacle, but felt the need to test out one more thing. Pulling off the glove of his right hand, he touched a wooden beam and Oscar felt an ice-cold shock running up his arm. Like electricity pulsing through his body, the sensation coursed up into his shoulder and made him stagger back, looking around completely confused. For a split second, the world had changed, he felt. The air had shifted as had the earth. He had smelled it. Fire close by. He had heard it. Voices. A mob of people braying for blood. He had seen nothing but the darkness of a sackcloth bag pulled over his head. Yet, had felt it. The rough texture of a hemp rope slung around his neck. Oscar coughed as he blinked and could see the empty field again. What had just happened? Why had he done this? He stared down at his naked, empty hand, shivering and shaking, then back at a wooden obstacle that still held the plough in place. Confusion gripped him. Where had the sudden urge to touch it come from? What had he experienced after? Oscar heard the engine of the tractor coming alive and stumbled back even further. His legs hardly worked anymore. His whole body seemed in shock. Somehow, he felt hot and cold at the same time. Sick to his stomach, yet ravenously hungry. Had he caught something of this piece of wood? Like some pathogen? It could have been covered in lead-based stuff. Or worse, his mind warned him even though he was pretty sure that no, this couldn't be something natural. Clear the area! He heard his son shouting from the cab of the tractor and tried to walk back a few paces more, stumbling and falling on his ass after a couple of seconds. 
The world was spinning again, as the engine of the machine puffed smoke up into the air, and he watched the tires slowly rolling back. There was a strange new noise now permeating his surroundings. The sound of metal scraping against wood and stone had changed. In his ears, it felt like screaming. Low and angry at first, getting higher, more filled with pain by the second. Oscar had to shield his ears with his hands as he sat there, trying to keep at least upright as he watched the plow pulling, then straining against the wooden beams. He could see it through his hazy vision. Something was wrong here. Something dark was grabbing and holding onto the metal. Hands. Shadowy, whirling fingers. They were all around him now, coming up from the ground. Released from the prison of hundreds of years. He screamed as he looked down and could see them, right by his legs and feet, touching his boots. Oscar? A high-pitched and distorted voice reached his ears. His wife, he knew, yet couldn't turn to look at her. The air around him was swirling with the movement of the shadowy hands. He could feel himself getting pulled down, cold air seeping into his skin. Oscar? Far away the engine of the tractor stalled, and he heard another voice screaming for him. It all sounded strange, like laughter in his ears. His head touched the ground just as the two figures reached him. Oscar could hardly move anymore. He felt it. Someone grabbed hold of him, picked him up and dragged him along. It was strange. Syllables still reached his ears. People screaming right by his side. Get him inside. He's burning up. We need a doctor. He understood the words. It could assign no meaning to the sentences. It all seemed strange, foreign. Light and shadows intertwined as he got pulled along, feeling his boots scraping over the rough ground. They had to plow the field, Oscar thought. He couldn't even keep the sentence in his mind. It was hot. The air, his clothes, the hands carrying him along. Would they toss him into hell? Was that where his journey would end? But he hadn't done anything. He could feel a hand on his cheek, cold yet hot, burning and freezing at the same time. There was the sound of steps on wooden boards coming from everywhere and nowhere at once. People carried him up the stairs. He blinked and could see the walls around him. Saw his wife. A sad, frightened expression. Everything would be all right, he wanted to say, but couldn't even open his mouth. Looking around was exhausting. He could feel himself getting weaker by the second. Oscar let his eyes fall shut, and as he opened them again, the world was strangely calm around him. No one was carrying him anymore. He was lying somewhere warm and soft. His bed. It took him a few seconds before he started to remember what had happened. The sun was still shining outside, so he could see light coming through the cracks in the curtains. Somehow, he still felt hot. Feverish. His wife's voice still reached him. He could hear her, holding back tears, talking somewhere close by. Something about a doctor, but no good news. Oscar closed his eyes for a moment. Just like back then, he thought, back when he was a little boy, when Grandpa had still worked the fields. There had been no doctor close by. All they had in town was a veterinary, 
and old lady mills. If someone had collapsed during the summer heat or some accident had occurred, people would run to get old lady mills, who would sit by the sick person's bed, talking to them and helping them. She would bring some homemade remedy or tell people what they should do. The townsfolk loved her in those moments. Other times, she would be practically ostracized, forgotten until one needed her. Oscar winced. He and his friends had played some mean, mean tricks on the old lady themselves. What he wouldn't give to have her here now. His wife's voice broke in the next room. He could hear her crying, almost wailing. Somehow, he needed to tell her to get old Lady Mills if the doctor wasn't available. He needed, he ought to. His throat was dry. He felt a shadowy hand still touching him, this ice-cold sensation still running up and down his arm. Breathing was getting harder. His forehead was burning up. The air in his lungs felt like liquid fire. He closed his eyes, knew he was delirious. This was bad. There, there, Oscar. An old, gnarled voice whispered softly into his ear, while a cold, leathery hand touched his forehead, cooling his thoughts and soothing his fear. Everything will be all right, you hear? He remembered her voice. One day when Grandpa's field hand had collapsed, old Lady Mills had visited them. You just need to stay calm and let the fever come down, okay? He blinked. The room he was lying in was dark, and the person sitting next to his bed was hardly more than a silhouette. You've gone and done something really stupid, Oscar. He heard her whisper, sorrow in her voice as he slowly tried to move his body. There was no pain anymore. Even the heat seemed to slowly die down. What have I done? He asked her, shutting his eyes and enjoying her cooling touch on his forehead. You shouldn't have been digging there. Didn't your daddy and gramps tell you? Slowly, he shook his head in response. It wasn't like he had done so out of greed. This here was necessary. You went and did something stupid, Oscar. Do you know what you've brought back up to the surface? He shook his head slowly. No. It was made of wood. That was all he had found out. Stupid, stupid boy. The voice chided him. You dug up something that should have never seen the light of day again. Something that happened here, in this town a few hundred years back. What you saw was a gallows, built for one particular victim. It took him a few moments to catch the meaning, and he turned his head toward the woman sitting next to his bed. A witch. A real one. Very few were caught by your people. But those that weren't never went quietly. Now it was his turn to shake his head. Shouldn't she have been burned if she was a witch? Oscar asked and heard a low, humorless chuckle in response. Only some are burned, others drowned, squashed or beaten, or, as in this case, hung. Hana was her given name, and on February the 4th, 1687, a Friday, the townspeople of this place hung her till her legs stopped moving. She was innocent, of course, tortured within an inch of her life, or for your ancestors strung her up. But as she died, 
a bag over her head. All the pain and hate she felt stayed of this world. They couldn't cut her down, couldn't wrench her body off the rope. So the people demolished the whole gallows, covered it with dirt, declaring this particular piece of land off-limits for any use ever. Oscar remembered the impressions he had gotten when he had touched it. The rope around his throat, the sack over his head, the smell of fire close by and the sounds of the braying mob. What should I do? He could hear the old woman breathing in deeply, her cool hand still helping him keeping the fever at bay. By touching it. You've been cursed. Its hate and anger have been stewing in here for over three hundred years. There isn't much anyone can do, you know. Lifting it on your own might be impossible. So you have to get it by its source. He was shaking his head and felt the heat rising inside his chest again. And make sure no one you cares about touches it without protection. You hear me, boy? Oscar swallowed hard. He could already feel the fear gripping his heart, yet the fever seemed lifted off his mind. Quickly now. I can hold it off much longer. The old woman hissed, and he suddenly felt her hand disappear and his body shoot up. It was night again. His wife was sleeping next to him, but there was no sign of the old woman. Yet, he could still feel her hand lingering on his forehead. Oscar turned around. The world seemed strangely dark now. There were at least six different medications on his nightstand, next to a glass of water. He could taste a medicine on his tongue, and thought about taking another sip but suddenly remembered the words of old Lady Mills again. There was something he had to do. Jumping out of bed silently to not wake his wife, Oscar ran to the window overlooking the piece of land they had tried to cultivate today. There was the tractor, and next to it, glimmering in the moonlight, the wooden beams of the old gallows. Only this time, Oscar could see something else. A figure, huddled in its shadow, long dark hair almost as black as the night surrounding it, pale white skin. He could feel his heart beating faster as he looked at the thing. Every primal instinct he possessed screamed at him in unison to duck and hide, to run away. Yet Oscar knew that he couldn't. The curse he had gotten was still coursing through his veins. He could feel it. Turning around on his heels, still trying to be as silent as possible, he started to sneak out of the room. His wife was still fast asleep, and he had to fight the urge to say goodbye to her, to touch her one last time. It wouldn't make it easier. Might even put her in danger. Old Lady Mills had warned him. Oscar snuck out of the room and could feel the cold wooden boards bending softly beneath his feet. He could feel the fever slowly rising again and felt cold air prickling his skin. This thing was calling to him, wanted him to do something. He ran down the stairs as fast as he could without making much noise. There had to be a way to stop this, to save himself. He could feel the cold air coming in from the front door, which was standing slightly ajar. Oscar had no time to think about it, needed to get to the cursed spot as quickly as possible. The entrance creaked as he pushed it open with his shoulder, feeling a stinging pain now slowly starting to burn his arms and legs. It felt like needles, sharp and hot. They poked his skin down to his bones. He could even smell it. Singed hair and flesh. His hair and flesh. 
The stench filled his nose and mouth. He walked on, stumbled a bit, yet tried to speed up anyway. It was getting worse. His time was running out. He groaned as he jumped down the stairs in front of his house. The same ones his wife and son had carried him over not even twelve hours ago. Oscar could already see it. The field, half dug up, and in its midst, the black wood of the gallows. It was reaching up chest high, Oscar thought, and a cold shiver ran through his bones. No, it hadn't been like that when he had touched it. It hardly stuck out of the ground. The vertical beam was already sticking out of the field. He could see the right angle clearly. The horizontal one had been cleaned as well. Oscar felt another rush of panic as his naked soul touched a soft earth of the field and he fell into a sprint. The pain was getting worse, yet his fear pushed it away. Down there, in the hole that had now started to form, he could see the dark figure. Oscar ran on. The thing still knelt there. He had to do something. This might be his only shot. Without slowing down, he extended his hand, started running past the hole and jumped a moment he felt something under his fingertips and could grab hold. A jolt shot up his arm as the thing got pulled out of the hole. Oscar rolled over the soft dart, ready to defend himself against whatever abomination he had pulled out, but froze completely as he saw the figure now out in the moonlight. Dad? He heard a well-known voice and could feel all the color draining from his face. What the fuck are you doing here? Oscar hissed at his son while jumping to his feet. The young man was kneeling on the ground. He could see his hands, dirty and raw, shivering from the cold and the long, hard labor. I'm saving you, his son shot back looking up at him with pure terror in his eyes. She told me. We need to get out of this hole and then she'll leave you be. I can save you, Dad. Oscar could feel his chest constricting. The words of old Lady Mill still echoed in his mind. Just let me help you. She's not angry at us, Dad. All she wants is to be set free. A stiff breeze hit him square in the face. He could feel the pain of this thing clearly. All the needles and blades they had used on her. Rough rope that had chafed away the skin of her wrists and ankles. He shook his head. No. Letting this thing out wouldn't just be suicide. It would kill them all. Take revenge against whoever lived around here. All their neighbors, their community. He could see his son's extended hand and grabbed hold of it to help him up. I'm so sorry. Oscar whispered as his left, balled into a fist, hit the young man right in the jaw and made him collapse in an unconscious heap. Eyes were staring out at him from the darkness beneath the beams. His son had dug there and had almost gotten down to the source of it all. Oscar could feel the pain and fever, its fear and rage. One last time he looked at the fallen form of his son, before he jumped into the hole. It was dark in here, darker than it should be. The stench of fire filled his nose, hot metal, burning wood and hair, Oscar felt like he was falling. A rough bag was over his head. Feel it. The voice, old and angry, hissed right into his ear. They did this. He tasted blood and bile. His teeth were missing. His tongue had been cut. Just let me out. He demanded. Yet he shook his head and heard the mob screaming around him. Sinner, 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 they shouted. Witch. 
could feel himself standing on the scaffold. A low breeze was blowing. The bag over his head was dark, yet he could see her face right in front of him. Dead, pale skin, milky white eyes, broken teeth and dark blood crusted around her mouth. Let me out. They deserve it, the voice said. He could feel it, her pain, the fear she had endured. Down in the basement of the town hall where they had kept her for weeks, months, doing God knows what to her. All she wanted was justice, satisfaction. It wasn't so bad, right? He could hear them all braying again. One voice called to them to quiet down. The priest he knew, because she had known it back then. He had stood there next to her, looking so gallant, so pure, so good, but being the worst monster of them all. The things he had done to her at night, while all the guards had been sent away. He could feel more bile coming up, spat out and tasted the bitter stuff on the charred remains of his tongue. It would be fair. She whispered, now softer, right into his ear. Oscar closed his eyes. His thoughts wandered back to his wife, his son. None of the people responsible were alive anymore. None of them would suffer. But the ones he knew today would be tortured and killed by something that couldn't be stopped. A tear ran down his cheek. He looked her in the eyes. Blood was trickling out of her wounds. Please, let it end with me, he whispered, and could see the face in front of his twisting into a hateful grimace. The birds had begun chirping again, yet he still sat there. He had woken up hours ago and couldn't move. Back then he had seen it, Dad standing in the hall together with something else, something bad. They had fought, and slowly the beams had started to sink down. He had listened, had witnessed it all. Dad had won, yet lost. The gallows were back beneath the earth, where his father would stay to keep watch. One last victim, who would never get a cross to mark his final resting place. He heard the loud, heart-wrenching scream coming from the house. Mom had woken up and found the bed beside her empty. He'd have to tell her something, explain. Patting the dirt off his pants, he rose to his feet. His jaw still hurt, yet he knew what he should do. They had to sell this place, get it off their hands and run away. Because sooner or later... Someone would dig up the spot, and this thing down there would come free. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoyed this week's story. If there are any questions, concerns, or cute pet pictures you would like to share with us, there are links to our ex, Instagram, Tumblr, and I'll buy me a coffee in the episode descriptions. All the best to you, and please join us again next week for another haunted tale.